Oh, I'm sorry, Stan. No, I'm, no, I'm really sorry. I mean, those contracts should have arrived this morning. No, 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 I'm sure it's probably some screw-up over on our, on our end, so I'll, I'll get those sent out to you right away. Yeah, again, I'm, I'm deeply, deeply sorry, Stan, okay? Bye-bye. Oh, man. Hello? Oh, hi, Ruth. Hi. No. The fax didn't come through. You didn't receive... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Ruth. No, we're having... We're having a lot of problems here. I'll send, I'll fax it out to you again right away. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of problems here. Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to my assistant about it. Yeah. Okay, again, deeply sorry, Ruth. Bye-bye. Bye. Can you come in here for a minute? <laughs> Idiot boy. Um, maybe you could help me out with something. I mean, something's happening here, or rather not happening. I mean... Faxes aren't being received, uh, packages aren't being delivered, and I was just wondering if you had, uh, if you had any idea what might be going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe you could do me a favor. Maybe you could just, you know, um, keep an eye open, see if you can see who's lousing up around here. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, thanks a lot, idiot boy. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't know how that got you. Okay. Counting on you. <laughs> He's a good man. First of all, I'd like to thank you for coming in this evening. And second of all, did you kill that guy? Nope. This guy's a tough cookie. Say that again, partner. Can I go? No. Shock affiliate, Creole Purr, and it's hello, Vanya Smith. Hello, Valda. Hello, Vanya. Torque stiffler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Valda, so is the Netherlander foot choir. Contest us. Crevo, Valda. Here, the champion von Antwerp, Belgium, Hans Freude. And as the premier challenger, Orton Hammerbaum, Sweden, Helio Bonnick, Ricky Sryonkovsen. And as the second 
Challenger van Toronto, Kanada, Daryl Bastik! Hans, how's the Manzi Filiat? Yeah. How's the Manzi Filiat? Filiat, yeah. how's the Manzi? Filiat! Nailat Filiat! Suvab, wasn't thy object? Thy object is in pineapple. Ah. Train for gun, Smith, the Netherlander Foot Squire. Nimontus Trajuki, Disaster Zun Rhein. Vision Ut Alan Atta Krampeltok, Brother Ut Topot, Plag Tuna Ebush Frem. Repeaten. Vision ut Alan Atta Krumpeltok, Vrada ut Topot Plok Tuna Ebush Frem. Ni punuk boy filiat. Vanya? <laughs> Daryl Vastik? What's to Philly? Arson Dust ein Meat? Adlia, Adlia, Adlia. Und specifica, what kunder meat? <laughs> Essen is beef tech? So we'd uh, like you to be really comfortable so you can confess. Okay. Would you like a coffee or a high-protein snack? How about some nice chicken wings? How about a TV? Canada is full of lazy, good-for-nothing, indulgent beer drinkers who don't give a damn. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's a commercial. Did you kill that guy? Nope. Damn. <laughs> hey, can we get cable? Hey, what do you think this is? A country club? Yeah. Let it show. Bye bye, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miriam. Laura, oh my God, you look fabulous. Oh, thank you. Oh, you gained weight since the last time I saw you, haven't you? Gosh, I, I, I don't know, Miriam. When was the last time I saw you? Six years ago. Oh, my God. Has it really been six years? Yes. Oh. And you gained what? 10, 11 pounds? I, I don't know, Miriam. I really, I really can't remember what I weighed six years ago. 125. I thought you weighed more, but you said 125. <laughs> then, yes. Yes, I have put on a few pounds since then. Well, you look fabulous anyway. What, what do you weigh? 135, 140? Miriam. 145? Miriam, I'm not going to tell you. 
150? Oh my God, you weigh over 150, don't you? Miriam, can we just change the subject? I mean, we haven't seen each other for six years. We have so much catching up to do. I'm sorry, you're right. So how do you think I look? Fabulous. You look, it's just so good to see you again. And how much do you think I weigh? I don't care, Miriam. Come on, guess. No, Miriam, I'm not, I'm not gonna guess. Huh? 108 pounds. 108 pounds? Yes. You, you, you do not weigh 108 pounds. Oh, yes, I do. No, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. No, you do not, Miriam. A thin 11-year-old girl weighs 108 pounds. I know. You don't weigh 108 pounds. Oh, yes, I do. I weigh myself on a scale. Well, then, you know what? That scale must be broken. Yes, it must be, because you cannot weigh 108 pounds at your height and still be alive. May I tell you about today's specials? What the hell are those? Menus. Who put you up to this? Who sent you here? Get away from me! Who sent you here? We're not quite ready to order yet. Are you okay, Miriam? Oh, yes, I, I'm fine. I'm great. Why shouldn't I be? I weigh 108 pounds. I have a scale in my purse. If you don't believe me, I can weigh myself for you. That won't be necessary, Miriam. Then you believe that I weigh 108 pounds? Yes. So why don't you just relax? Okay? Ah! What? You touched my skin! So? I've got fat cells are all over me! I can feel myself gaining weight as I speak! There, I gained half a pound thanks to your fat cells! They're probably mutated by the millions! I've got to leave. Miriam, where are you going? I just got here. I can't be seen in public bloated like this. Cal coming through! <laughs> Well, I just received a telephone call from our local police station concerning our youngest son, Brian, the baby. My first thought was, God, I hope he hasn't killed anyone. Because he could, you know, because he's got his father's temper. His father, Gordon, once killed a man, yeah, during the war. A German, not in Europe, though, in Toronto. The officer said that they found Brian at 3 a.m. stumbling around Gage Park soliciting drugs. Gordon said it could have been worse considering he could have been soliciting something else. <laughs> they said that they found on Brian's person marijuana and something called residue. Some new kind of killer drug, I suppose. <laughs> the officer said that he was completely hopped up in the stuff that he was insolent, had fake ID, the complete M.O. I hope they beat him. <laughs> I do, because that's the only thing that works. In my day, they would have just taken him up behind the woodshed and that would have been it. But you can't do that no more. Oh no, it's not politically correct. Besides, no one's got woodsheds anymore. That's why you see so many kids getting hit down at the mall. <laughs> when the phone rang, you know, when the telephone rang, I knew in my heart that it was about Brian. Because, you know, a mother's got a sick sense about her kids. Not the fathers, though. They barely know their own kids' names. Gordon once picked up the wrong child at Sunday school. Although I have to say, she did look a lot like Brian. Why? Why do they do it, huh? Jeez, I ask you, I don't know. I'll tell you one thing. He's certainly not following my example. The strongest thing I've ever put in my body is a shandy. I even had my hysterectomy under a local. I should have seen it coming. Yeah, I should have. I should have seen it coming when his grades plummeted. Well, they were always low. But a mother knows the difference between a kid who's stupid and a kid who's high. You know what? I blame the school system. I do, yeah. It all started to go wrong the day they took down the Queen's picture. Because kids need guidance. That's right, kids aren't bad. No one's born bad, except maybe the Antichrist. <laughs> the problem is today, today there's too much temptation for kids. There's too much choice. In my day, there was no choice. You got married, you had kids, and you watched the CBC. <laughs> 
there weren't any drugs in Canada yet. Sure, lots of people were drunks, but that's social. <laughs> Gordon's down there now, springing him. Oh, thank God for instant coffee. Oh, I don't know what I would do without my Maxwell house. I suppose the only thing that we can do now is pray that one of those cop shows wasn't there filming his arrest. Because I couldn't bear to see him on TV with his face all scrambled up. Well, I better go make them some sandwiches. They're bound to be famished when they come in. Hey, partner. Huh? You know, uh, I killed a guy. Really? Yeah. Me too. Oh. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, killing a guy? Yeah. Heck, we all do it now and then. Yeah. How about you? <laughs> nope. I guess the peer pressure thing only works for smoking. Yeah, that's how I started. You met your match today, fish. Man one, fish zero. Sucker! <laughs> Thanks a lot, partner. Oh, Donnie, you're just so full of beans today. I feel great. You know, I think I might grow a beard. No! Oh, why not? I'm in the heart of my vacation. It just might look good. I'm just so bean filled. <laughs> Time for work. Better shave it off. No, the beard stays. You go. <laughs> the beard stays. Now, a company's logo is their calling card to the world. And don't we all know how the world can suck some days? <laughs> Anywho, what we're trying to do here is... Man, I feel great. Sorry to interrupt, Nina, but... Booba, booba, booba. I know it took me 10 a.m., but I think I'm going to get me a couple of steaks and some brewskis. You ba booba, booba. Are you sure full of energy? I guess he still thinks he's on vacation. <laughs> he should shave that beard off. He looks like a kid with that beard. Hey, and did you hear about that big fish he caught? <laughs> really? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Don? What? Nothing. I was doing nothing. I was doing nothing. Don't you get it? Ah! My eyesight's getting better. 
I am getting better. <laughs> oh, Donald. Donnie, what's wrong? We're fine. We. Shut it, you old skank. Well, I'm certainly not a skank. <laughs> I know it's my strength, but this chair keeps breaking. What's wrong with your voice, Donald? <laughs> Nothing. My uh, beard's a little too tight, that's all. <laughs> Can't breathe. Can't breathe. As soon as I hurt. What you're about to see may terrify you. I grow a beard. <laughs> ah! 